Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with iOS 18, Apple has introduced hundreds of features, some of them helpful, some of them not as helpful. Of course, there were bugs to go along with that and more, but I wanted to go over the best iOS 18 features you forgot about that don't have to do with Apple intelligence and should be available on all iPhones. Now, the first thing is pretty simple and straightforward. And if you're familiar with iOS 18, you'll probably want to skip it. But I get this question all the time. How do you make the icons dark? And to do this, just press and hold on your home screen, tap edit, go to customize, and you can change them here from light to dark. Then you can tap this little sun icon and change the background wallpaper and brighten it a little bit. Of course, you could tint them, make it automatic, or just put them back to dark. You can also make them larger and get rid of the overall app labels as well. So many have asked me how to do that. That's how you can quickly set that. And you can also quickly resize your widgets. This is something I think a lot of people forgot about. So maybe you want a widget for let's take the fitness app here press and hold, and you'll see we have different options here. Tap this one, it will turn into a widget. Press and hold it again, we can make it a larger widget. Press and hold it, we can bring it back down to the overall size of the icon just to open the app itself. So this works on any app that actually has widgets available. So again, voice memos, if it has it, it'll be there. If it doesn't, you won't have the option. So again, back into fitness, and then we have those options if you want to change them. Before we continue, this app on top is just a weather app called Mercury Weather, where you can actually change the overall color of it. I'm going to get this question just about in every video, but I really like it. If you want to change the color of it, you can. Now it turns to a different color, such as rainy blue. So whatever works for you, you can change it, but it is a paid app I bought myself. I just kind of like the way it looked. Now, the next thing you need to know has to do with Safari. Safari is really great to use. Maybe you're using it regularly. You've got a hundred different tabs open. Maybe you go to different websites. Maybe we'll open another one. Maybe we'll open another one here. We'll just go to Google and there's lots of different things that are open. Now, if you go in, sometimes you could have hundreds of tabs. If you don't want to close them all together at once, maybe press and hold, you can have them expire over time and close automatically. To do this, go into your settings, go down to Safari within the Safari option, scroll down to where it says close tabs. Instead of having manually, you can have them close after one day, one week, or one month. So you can set this for whatever works for you, have them all close that will free up the overall tabs, sort of make things less confusing and make it more usable. If you're trying to find things regularly and you just forget to close them all together. Another thing that's super useful in Safari that you may have forgotten about is the ability to hide anything on the screen, whether that's a section you don't want to see, maybe an advertisement that's there, tap the little menu button here, then you can tap hide distracting items. And maybe we'll get rid of this section here, tap hide and it disappears. You can do that over and over with just about everything on here. If you just want to clean it up, maybe you just want a better screenshot or something like that. If you want to bring it back, tap cancel and they all return. With the release of iOS 18 and then the further release of future updates, such as iOS 18.4, Apple has added a lot of different things to allow us to have music or noise in the background. One way you can access this is by using the hearing icon and then tap on background sounds. You then have the option to maybe have a dark noise or the ocean in the background stream, or even maybe rain, whatever works for you. And then of course you have the settings. In addition to this, if you don't want background sounds like this, but maybe you'd rather have ambient music with more recent updates, Apple added the option for this. So if you press and hold and then customize your control center, scroll down to ambient music, you have sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. These are great. Whether you're doing something like I would with editing a video, or maybe you're studying and you just need something in the background to sort of drone out some noise that's there. Try turning one of these on and it makes things a little bit nicer just to use your phone, have that in the background and take up some of the sound. And when you're in the control center, maybe you've added a bunch of controls. You don't really like the look of it and you want to reset it to default. This is pretty simple to do. You can do that now by going into settings, going down to control center, then tap on reset control center. It will verify that's what you want to do. Tap reset control center, and it will go back to like it was when you first installed iOS 18. So you can get all of the same things back and then you can fully customize it if you'd like and change this however you see fit that works best for you. So I'll change this back. I'll get rid
rid of a bunch of these things. You can get rid of just about every page here as well. If you don't want those and you want it to look more like it did with previous updates with just a singular page within the camera app, there's a few things you should know about. You may have forgotten about this one. If you go into maybe your photo app, tap the little icon there and then go to the timer icon. We now have the option for five seconds. Three seconds was too quick for many where you need to get set up and then it will take a photo. 10 seconds may be too long. So they've added an additional option for five seconds. So if you want to use that, that's now available. In addition to this, when we're recording video, so if we go back out, go to video, when we're recording video, we now have the option to pause the video. This is something that people had wanted for years. So maybe you need to change the overall look of what's in the background, change something up. You can pause it and then resume it to make it however you'd like and without editing it in a separate editing app afterward. So that's something that's really nice that you may have forgot that's there. If we go into the photos app, this is probably the most controversial app that Apple updated with iOS 18. Let's go into it and make it more like iOS 17. So within photos, you'll see, I have the album at the top. Then I have recent days, pinned collections and utilities. You can go through and see all the different utilities here, but if you don't want any of these, you can customize it, go to customize and reorder. And I typically recommend either recent days, if you want that, or just pinned collections. If you use pinned collections, you can make it look even more similar to what we had with iOS 17. So if we go back out, you'll see, we only have pinned collections. Then we can tap on modify and add what whatever we'd like, whether that's albums, favorites, videos, screenshots, or recently deleted or recently saved. So maybe I want that here, press and hold, customize it and bring it to the top. You can use anything from map utilities, shared albums, and more. Once you have that now, all you have is your photo album above and your pin collection below where you can scroll through and then see what you want. Other than that, you don't have to have anything else that they've added with iOS 18. So I would recommend customizing this as it's something that's really been upgraded. That seems to be pretty nice. In addition to this, if we go into our app here and then we go to edit within our editing options, there's a new option you may have forgotten about. And one of those has to do with, if we go here, you can see under appearance, we can have system dark or light mode. So maybe we know this is going to be on a background that's light, or maybe it could be on a background that's dark and you want to see what it looks like. You can edit based on what the overall background will be like within the phone app. There's something now that's very useful that maybe you just forgot was there within phone under recents. If you pull down just a little bit, we now have the option to search and we can also use our voice to find that as well. Zach Zolo. You'll see it updates it and then shows all the different calls and contacts matching that name. So that's something you can do. Just pull down a little bit and you can search for it. Of course they added T nine dialing as well and some other great features with iOS 18, but that one's probably the most helpful for me that many people forget is there. If we go into messages within messages, if you tap the plus button on the left, you can now send later if it's to someone with iMessage. Unfortunately, this doesn't work yet with someone outside of messages, but you can send this a little bit later. And I know quite a few people forgot that they added this despite many wanting this feature as one of their top features. So if I wanted to send a message, maybe on Sunday at 8 1 PM, I could do that and say, Hey, just a reminder to call me. And then we can send it and it will actually wait until then to actually send the overall message. Of course, we can delete it altogether, edit the message or delete the message entirely. Now I wanted to share some tips on how to secure your iPhone even more with features you may have forgotten that were added with iOS 18 and some previous ones as well. If we go into settings, go down to privacy and security under privacy and security, go into tracking and you can ask apps not to track. This means they won't understand what other apps are doing and you can turn this off entirely and they just won't ask to track and they won't track at all. So you can say, ask apps to stop tracking or allow apps to continue tracking. So you'll see here, you can select them individually or not at all. So I'll turn it off, say, ask apps to stop tracking and they'll no longer track what other apps are doing. Another thing I would recommend, and this is going to depend on what you're using for Wi-Fi, but if you go into your Wi-Fi settings, then tap on the I next to your Wi-Fi network you're connected to, and then you'll see private Wi-Fi addressed. Mine says fixed, meaning it won't change. But if you want to rotate this, you can tap on fixed and you'll see it says rotating. If you have it on rotating, it will change regularly to make it more difficult to track your specific device. You can turn this off if you're having problems on your Wi-Fi network, but rotating will just update and refresh 
refresh that overall address. Again, back in privacy and security, another new feature that they've added that's super helpful has to do with contacts. Under contacts, you'll see all of the individual apps that can utilize contacts. If we scroll down, you'll see that we have different options now for full access, limited access, or none. So for example, if I want to change it for T-Mobile, I can change it to limited access and then select specific contacts I want it to be able to access, or I can allow it to access all of my contacts, over 800 of them. So you'll see we have that option here if you want to change it or not allow it altogether. Maybe we want none, change it to none. And again, this is on a per app basis. So I would recommend going through this and changing it to however you'd like. If you want TikTok to access any of your contacts or none at all. Another thing under privacy and security, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, is stolen device protection. This is something I would recommend you enable if you haven't already, and turn it on so that it makes it more difficult to steal your device if maybe someone grabs it and it's just sitting there nearby, or maybe you dropped it and someone picks it up. Now it adds a layer of security to your iPhone that in the event it's stolen and someone knows your passcode, it will not make it easy for them to actually enter the passcode. And even if they turn off the phone, it can still be tracked now with iPhone. So that's something I know a lot of people wanted a passcode for that, but it's not really necessary with iPhone as long as you have Find My enabled and some of these features enabled. Also, a couple other things I'd recommend enabling under privacy and security have to do with analytics and improvements or disabling. You can share iPhone and watch analytics if you want or not at all. So you'll see enhanced beta feedback, for example, improve Apple Pay, improve hand washing. I typically turn these off for everything unless I want them to actually have this information. It shouldn't use a whole lot of battery or anything, but it is something that I typically turn off. Also the same is true under Apple advertising. I turn off personalized ads as I don't really want them, but if you want them, you can enable that as well. Another thing Apple added has to do with battery and charging. Under charging, we can set a charge limit and it will recommend it based on how we use our phone. I typically just leave it on optimized battery charging, but if I turn that off, we'll turn it off entirely and then maybe bring this down to 90% or so, and then it will learn from how you're using your phone, charge it to 90% and then recommend a charge limit based on how often you need to charge your phone or use it. So we'll set limit to 100%. I'll turn on optimized battery charging and that's how I typically use it. Of course, you could use clean energy charging as well. One other thing I wanted to share has to do with when you're using your phone and you're in a car. This is one of my favorite options and many people either know it's there and haven't tried it or just don't know it's there altogether. Go into your settings, go to accessibility, then go to motion and under motion, you'll see show vehicle motion cues. If we go into this and have it on automatic, they'll enable when it senses movement from the car or we can turn it on right now and you'll see dots on the screen. These typically help with overall motion sickness or just feeling nauseous or nauseated. So when you're using your phone, if you move it around, you'll see the dots move. As you start to accelerate, they move up and down. They go faster and faster and just give you a visual cue that something's in motion. And it seems to help me a lot. I know it doesn't help everyone, but it definitely is helpful for many people. So be sure to try that out if you haven't. Now there are hundreds of features in iOS 18, many of which I haven't shared right now, but there's quite a few helpful ones and quite a few small ones and just things that are there to be helpful overall. However, iOS 19 is supposed to bring a full redesign. So we'll have to see what they do with that. Maybe it will enable us to use the phone a little bit differently, be more stable, have better battery life and more. But those are just some of the features you may have forgotten that exist in iOS 18 to make the experience on iPhone a little bit better. Let me know what your favorite feature of iOS 18 is in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.